We are back in that deep tropical moisture. It's hard to believe that July is almost here and hurricane season is around the corner. Here's the dew point plots from the GFS, all this purple. That's going to be 70s dew points, and it looks like the gulf is pretty much wide open. Flow coming up from the south-southeast from the Yucatan and the Caribbean, and that should help bring in quite a bit of water vapor over the next week. And we will see monsoon season likely starting in Arizona next week. Here's what the surface chart looks like at this hour. We've got a 10, 24 millibar high right there off the coast of Maryland. This is a large cold air mass temperatures in the 70s this afternoon. And even more notable are the dry dew points. 44 there at Pittsburgh. We've got 46 at Louisville and 53 at Paducah. And typically this time of year, those are going to be running around 60 to 70. The tropical air, yeah, that's down there in Texas, flowing up north, and you saw that wedge on that GFS plot, that little axis coming up northward. And then further out to the west, it looks like we have a dry line. And just to the west of that dry line, temperatures coming up to 107 at Tucumcari. That's going to be close to the records. You can see some of those temperatures right there. Dow Hart 105, that is tying their record for today. Borger at 106, that breaks the record for today of 105. And Amarillo coming up to 102, and that's not quite up to their 103 record. And out in the east central U.S., some very cold temperatures this morning. This was just before dawn. You can see Jackson, Tennessee there at 53. That breaks their record of 54 set in 1972. Little Rock at 58 there. Memphis hanging on the 62, but I can see some 50s out there around Crossville, up into the Jackson, Kentucky region. And this has kind of been the story. Cool conditions out east and hot out west. And that's the other story. Here we're looking at the Pacific Northwest. This is a GFS model forecast, and we're looking at conditions this evening at the time of max heating. One little isolated 101 reading there at Pasco, a lot of 90s. And let me show you what happens for Thursday. Okay, little cool down for Thursday. Let's go into Friday. Well, on Friday, the heat returns. Lots of 90s, and you can see 91 there at Boise, 92 at Portland, 93 at Seattle. For Saturday, it gets even worse. 107 at Portland, 110 at Pasco, 96 at Boise. And you should take these readings with a grain of salt because it's going to get crazy here on these panels. This is what the model has for Sunday. It's going for 115 there at Portland. The all-time record at Portland is 107, and you can see Pasco over there with 115. The model wants to go for 121 degrees at Portland. Yeah, that's probably going to be way out in left field. We have a rule in forecasting that you never forecast record temperatures, because statistically you're going to be wrong if you do that. That's most likely not going to happen. And in fact, if we look at the European model, well, this looks a little bit more reasonable, but even the European model trying to go for 114 there. Again, the likelihood of this is pretty low. Look at that 103 up there near Vancouver. Some crazy temperatures on this panel. The actual forecast temperatures, you can see that the Weather Service is not going for any of that craziness. 103 in Portland, which is still pretty hot. However, on Sunday, that's what they're forecasting the hottest temperature to be, 108, and that will break the all-time record at Portland. So we're looking at a fairly decent chance that that will happen. 100 degrees at Seattle, that's pretty bad there. And we can see a few 110s down there in the valleys of California. Well, let's take a look at the upper levels and get a better look what's happening. The polar vortex still appears to be going. There it is right there. That's centered up there in the Northwest Territories, Nunavut, and the Canadian High Arctic. 
We've got the slow moving onshore into Northern California. And over the next day or two, we see that that low doesn't really go anywhere kind of gets squashed by this ridge that's developing up to the north. That anticyclogenesis up in British Columbia, that's going to be associated with that warming. And you can see that cutoff high developing around Vancouver Island. There it is right there. And you notice we also get this Rex block. So we got this jet up to the north. We've got this cutoff high off the northwest coast. And a cutoff low down at the south when that's lined up along the same meridian that's a strong indication of a rex block and when that happens the upper level flow tends to slow down and become somewhat stationary that's what we call a blocking pattern and this energy we have out in the pacific that's probably going to be run around up the top of that ridge some of it could also shear off and dig underneath the upper level high. So let's see what happens. Looks uh, certainly hot through the weekend. We go into Sunday. That's going to be about the hottest period. You can see the upper level high right there over Washington. It looks like that cutoff flow reattaches and gets plugged back into the prevailing westerlies. Then going into early next week, Looks like the upper heights start shrinking a little bit, but this should remain continued hot in that part of the country. And it just hangs on very stubbornly. Some hot weather may be spreading into Montana for later next week. And what is the next big change? Probably that trough coming down from Canada. Good chance of some precip and maybe cooler weather associated with that. However, for the western half of the country, it looks like the ridging and weak flow will predominate. However, there's also the monsoon in Arizona to talk about, and we have to look at a different chart for that. Here's the average daily dew points at Tucson in southeastern Arizona. This is the month of June here, and you're looking at the dew points. If we get up to about 54 degrees, for three consecutive days, we assume that the monsoon has arrived. We had a very dry period around the 12th, but you can see that the dew points have been increasing very gradually for about a week and a half. Here's how those numbers look at Phoenix. Pretty much the same trend. They're already up to 58. So here's the forecast GFS dew points. And the area we're going to want to focus on is right there around El Paso. Typically, when the moisture gets started up, it beefs up in that area and then pushes to the northwest. So going into the weekend, let's check that out. Dew points coming up to the 50s at El Paso. And then right around Saturday and Sunday, there's a really good surge right there. And you can see that in southern New Mexico, strengthening, and there it goes, pushing into Arizona on Monday, the 28th. And you can see that dew point coming up to 56 at Tucson. Dries out to 46 again, but here it comes once again up to 57. And if we keep running that forward, it looks like that might be here to stay. Not sure about that. The models are not really good past one week, but that's certainly encouraging. And if we look at our moisture sources down to the south, northwestern Mexico looking pretty moist. Also, Texas, a lot of moisture there, and it appears that the Gulf is still open. And it pretty much keeps that moisture in Arizona all through the end of the period. So that may just be it. Well, let's bring it back and focus on today. So much to keep track of, it's hard to keep these programs organized. We have an enhanced risk in Nebraska. You can see that severe thunderstorm watch for the Sand Hills region and a slight risk up there in northern Minnesota. A couple of areas of thunderstorms coming together, one along the Nebraska-South Dakota border, another around Rapid City. Now, it does look like early on, if you run this back to earlier this afternoon, 
the towers look a little bit high based. And the stuff in the Black Hills region, that appears to be orographic. So I think some of these may be a little bit high based. We can verify that by taking a look at the moisture plot. We'll get that by looking at the METAR plots, and you can see Valentine, Nebraska, thunderstorm with 104 over 48. That's a temperature dew point spread of about 56 degrees. So those are going to be buku high paced. 102 over 42 at Phillipsburg, so the same problem there. And at Rapid City, a little bit closer together, but still a very wide temperature dew point spread. And you can see there the high resolution rapid refresh verification. Looks like the storms up there near Valentine look to be well forecast, not the ones on the Black Hills. However, we did talk about that high LCL, the high temperature dew point spread. That doesn't preclude you from getting severe weather. It's definitely going to rule out tornadoes, but high winds, that can be a problem because of the enhanced V. Let me bring up a sounding right there ahead of those thunderstorm cells that it's popping up. And we can see 104 over 49 degrees. And this is the enhanced V right there. It kind of looks like a upside down V. Now, if you have that with a lot of cape aloft, that can give you some potential for strong outflow winds. You can see the decape there, 1900, supporting that wind threat. Now, it's probably too hot to get any hail, so we're not going to worry about that. And the cape in that layer way up there looks to be running about 1,000 to 1,500. And there's those LCLs right there, 3.7 kilometers. That translates to about, yeah, we don't even really need to do the math. We can just look at the LCL right there. We know that 700 millibars right there, that's going to be about 10,000. 500 millibars is going to be about 18,000, so that means our cloud bases are probably going to be 14,000 feet off the ground. So very little precip is going to make it to the surface. However, certainly some of those wind gusts will. And there's a look at those storms in northern Nebraska continuing to develop at this hour. Looks like we're intersecting these storms at about four to 5,000 feet. Some of the reflectivities there are pretty heavy, so I guess they are dumping out quite a precipitation cascade. So maybe some of that precip is making it to the ground quite a feet from such a high-based storm, because it's pretty clear that these are very high-based. A quick check of conditions over there in Europe I don't want some of our viewers to feel left out. What we do see is a thickness zone right there. See those dashed red lines. So we do have a frontal boundary probably extending from this Bear Clinic Low in Italy, maybe through the Mediterranean, down towards Gibraltar. It looks like another segment extending up into Poland and up into Finland. And you can see that precip band back behind it, some isentropic lift taking place behind the front. And then further back, we've got some anticyclogenesis in UK, probably some cooler conditions. And aside from that, not much else. Out ahead of that front, these are probably some very healthy convective cells in Romania and Western Ukraine. And I did want to share this image from a couple days ago. They've had some very intense heat in Siberia. You can see right around Yakutsk here, maybe one little 91 degree reading. Other places, 92, 84, 93. That's very hot for that part of the country. It's not quite up to the all-time records, but I'm not so sure on the northern coast. You can see way up here, 88 degrees on the Arctic Ocean. That's very significant. That could be near a record. And 85 right there. Yeah, that's that's some serious heat. It has cooled down since then, but they are expecting another record breaker up in this part of Siberia around uh, Sunday. 
I'll see if I can rem remember to check back in on that. I think they may be seeing some 80s and near 90s. And then they're going to have a bunch of cold air coming in from the west to shut down that heat. I want to thank our new supporter, Sticks Mix. Welcome to the family and hope you enjoy this program. Any of you who want to support the program, remember you can go to our Patreon at patreon.com slash metlab, or you can go to weathergraphics.com and pick up a book. All right, that's all I've got for today. Hope you all have a great afternoon and evening. Take care and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.